Welcome to Pick Your Poison. Today we're talking about the plague, or as the Greeks would call it, groin plague. Opa! The term bubonic plague is derived from the Greek word bubon, which translates to groin. And yes, that means 25 million people died in the 14th century from the plague, and the Greeks went around calling it groin plague. Way to keep it classy, Greece. But much like 90% of the Greek yogurts on the market, the name is a lie. It may say groin plague on your death certificate, but it was probably just regular old plague that killed you. Plague is caused by the bacterium Yersinia pestis, and bubonic plague is just one type of that disease. There's also septicemic and mnemonic plague. Each one attacks different parts of your body, but we're getting way ahead of ourselves. You most likely got the plague from a flea that had recently bitten a plague-infected rat, squirrel, or other rodent. Man, you have weird bedfellows. There's also a chance that you got the plague from direct contact with plague-infected fluid or tissue from a sick or dead animal. Seriously, you should start hanging out with people. There's also a very slim chance that you got the plague from inhaling infected respiratory droplets from a sick and dying human or cat. Damn it, you are way too slutty to keep on living, girl. Who kisses a dying cat? Cats. Gross. There's a reason they say you can't hug every cat. Now, here's where it gets a little graphic. So if you're squeamish, you may want to look away or ask your dying cat girlfriend to cover your eyes for you. Bubonic plague lives in your lymphatic systems, causes fever, headaches, and swollen lymph nodes. It can be treated with antibiotics. So if you get bubonic plague, go to a doctor. If left untreated, it has a 40 to 60% chance of killing you within a week. Septicemic plague lives in your bloodstream and causes extreme weakness, abdominal pain, shock, external bleeding, internal bleeding, and the skin and tissue of your fingers, toes, and nose may turn black and die. Yuck. It can be treated and you should have it treated. If you don't, there's a 99% chance that you'll be dead within three or four days. Mnemonic plague lives in your respiratory system. It has most of the same symptoms as bubonic plague, plus chest pain, cough, bloody mucus, and respiratory failure. It can be treated, but it is the deadliest of the three. You have to seek treatment within the first 24 hours or you'll be dead in one to three days. In the pre-antibiotic era, mnemonic plague had a mortality rate of almost 100%. So, you just died of the plague, and things are not looking too hot. First of all, you're one of seven people a year in the US who get some form of the plague. That's such bad luck, it's almost good luck. You should have played the lotto more, you odds beater you. And secondly, the plague is seasonal, and you're most likely to get it while living in a rural area. So what I'm saying is, you got the plague in the late spring or early fall, and now your morning children have to work the farm instead of enjoying their summer vacay or going out for Halloween candy, depending on what time of year you died. And I guess your belief system, some people don't celebrate Halloween, but. That's way off the point. The point is the plague is not the best way to die. Seriously, don't die from the plague. It's really weird when you do that. Instead, maybe give dimethylmercury a try. It's an organo metal, which makes it sound like a headbanger granola rock played on chemical-free instruments, but I promise you, it's just a badass poison. As always, please subscribe and please let me know in the comments any poisons you'd like to hear more about, like this guy did for dimethylmercury.